Hello and welcome back to Poe's Kitchen. We're going to be making our own pasta today. It's the first time I've ever done it and the shops are completely uh, devoid of all uh, dry pasta. So we're going to be making our own dough and rolling it out without a, a pasta maker because I don't have one of those either. We're going to be using a rolling pin. I've never done it before, but needs, uh, needs be as needs must. Is that the expression? And we're going to see how it goes. I suspect it won't go well, but we won't know until we try. And if I can do it, I'll be very pleased with myself because I'll uh, be able to, uh, you know, just say that I can do it. The recipe calls for 250 grams of flour, and they suggest that you pour it out onto a counter and mix it on the actual counter, but I think that sounds like madness, so I'm going to be making the dough in a bowl. It's really a really good reason why they tell you to make it on a counter. But I've got this sort of, I've got this hole at the back of the, at the counter, and I don't want, I don't want flour falling through there, if we can help it. Right, so that's just about 275. I try to be exact, I don't know why. I know that these scales don't actually allow you to be exact to the gram, but I'm sure you can sympathise with the slight superstitious behaviour of measuring things out exactly for no reason. So the actual ingredients are really simple. All we have to do is make a little well in the middle here. I suppose you don't have to use a fork, this is actually a really bad way of making a well. Let's use a spoon. Making a well in the middle of the flour in order to help it mix in properly, which is something I have done before, which I'm kind of familiar with. So at least it with we have some familiar ground there. One thing the supermarkets seem not to be running out of is eggs. So. We've got plenty of eggs here. We only need three. I'm supposed to crack them into the middle. It's quite hard when you're holding the baby, but not impossible. I'm, I'm really embarrassed about how how I still, at this age, do not know how to crack an egg without getting shell in in the mixture. I always end up fishing a little bit out. If you know any good tips for how to do this without getting shell in your food, please let me know. I'm dying to, there we go. It's not that hard to get it out actually. That's one down, let's get the other two in. Last one. Oh, there we go, so no shell in the last two. That's something at least. And the last, the third and final ingredient is a pinch of salt, which I'm not actually going to measure, I'm just going to do a few turns on the old salt grinder until I think it's enough. That's just what I'm like. And I don't think it really matters if it's too salty, because I like salty food. The instructions say to beat the eggs and then incorporate the flour sort of bit by bit. So we'll see how that goes. One of the yolks has escaped. Back in there. The, uh, the flour forms a surprisingly solid wall. We have a, we've got a lot of escapage around the side here. Alright, let's do some structural repositioning here. Get back. I know if you're trying to create a kind of light batter for any reason, for making pancakes or whatever, you need to under beat your flour. Try not to work the flour too much because it develops gluten strands. That's what I've learned from watching YouTube anyway. But since we're kind of making pasta, which is kind of supposed to be dense and chewy, there's no, there's no such thing as overworking it, I, as I understand it. So, okay, that's a pretty... I mean, it's not very smooth, but I think that's kind of what we're doing. We're trying to get a runny consistency in the middle and then slowly work in the flour from the outside to make a kind of much thicker dough. God, this is a workout. <laughs> I'm getting tired. <laughs> okay, that's looking pretty smooth, actually. I guess if you have a food processor, that's probably the way to go with this, but... We're cooking for the apocalypse, so that's just a soup. There's no, uh... There's no food processors. It might be time to start thinking about working this with my hands. It's getting very thick. More of a dough type of consistency. Right, let's cover it in flour because there's nothing worse than getting sticky dough on your fingers. Okay. 
go clean your hands first, and then you should be safe to just go ahead and just want to take off my <laughs> engagement ring, wedding ring. Maybe the rest of this flower can be used to uh, flower my surface, which has also been cleaned, by the way. Clean the surface of your table before doing this. This is really messy. <laughs> okay. I'm just kneading dough the way that I watched my grandfather knead dough when he used to uh, make bread at our house. That's the only way I've ever known how to knead. Stretch it and fold it. And I keep adding flour just because it gets kind of sticky. So I'm adding this extra flour from the bowl onto the dough. Right, that's all the flour gone pretty much. So I don't know if I'm supposed to add more to uh, to flour the surface with. It's actually not that sticky anymore. It's kind of got this consistency of blue tack. Uh, it's a little bit softer than blue tack, but it's got that same kind of tackiness. Again, I guess it's got to be it's probably going to be not sticky so that I can actually roll it out, right? Or maybe once I chill, but it needs to be chilled in the fridge after this step, so maybe when it chills, it'll become less sticky. The recipe doesn't say anything about adding extra flour, and it doesn't say anything weirdly, it doesn't say anything about how sticky the dough should be, it just says it should be soft and smooth. I mean, it is soft, and it is smooth, I guess. Is smooth the opposite of sticky? I think that's all right. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the uh, the refrigeration step. So to refrigerate, we need to put it in a bowl, in a bowl, and cover it with cling film. All right. Something quite pleasing about the way that the uh, cling film forms a perfectly flat surface on top of a bowl like this. After 30 minutes I took the dough out of the fridge, just floured the countertop with some uh, a few pinches of flour. I got started rolling it out before I remembered that the recipe said that you're supposed to split it into three first. So you only have to roll out one third of it at a time, as you, as you can imagine, you're, you're rolling it out quite thin, so if you did all of it at once you probably would run out of counter space, so doing it one third at a time is a lot more manageable. The recipe also described this technique of rolling it so that you change direction by 45 degrees every couple of seconds so you're constantly changing the direction of the stretch so that you kind of I guess you kind of surprise the the gluten strands. I looked up a few different ways to make the pasta into shapes you know like spaghetti or fusilli all those shapes were quite a bit too difficult so I ended up just cutting it into these really basic sort of one centimeter strips and then it cooks a lot like a how you would cook dry spaghetti but for a lot shorter amount of time so just get some water really hot and boiling with some salt in it and just add the pasta I actually didn't know how much to put in there because I didn't know how much it would expand kind of got a bit fatter and thicker but this amount which I did in a little milk pan kind of to the capacity of the milk pan ended up being maybe a little bit less than we'd normally have so I'd suggest going for maybe a little bit more than what I did of course, the amount of space that it takes up much depends on what kind of shape that you mould it into, so I can't really give you any volumetric guidelines. It's done cooking after boiling for about four minutes for this one. The, the recipe said about three minutes, but I think this one ended up boiling for about four. It was a lot thicker than the dried pasta that you'd buy from a supermarket. You know, a bit different. I, don't, I wouldn't say it's better or worse, it was just sort of different. And I'm serving this with some bolognese sauce that I made up in a big batch. 
and left in the freezer, as I described in my previous video on chili con carne. The, the bolognese recipe is pretty much the same as the chili recipe, but instead of adding beans and, and, and chili spices, uh, I just add you know, bay leaves and carrots, and it tasted good. Uh, it tasted just like pasta. Like I said, it was thicker. I gave it to my husband to try, and he said, it tastes like pasta. Next time I do it, it might even be better. I might be able to get it a little bit thinner, would be something I'd aim for, and maybe to make it into a little bow tie shape. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope to see you again soon.